This is a 1995 Volvo 960, but it's a little different from your average run-of-the-mill 90s Volvo, because this one has been stretched for added comfort and added luxury in the back, probably for diplomatic use in Washington, D.C. It's quite possible the Swedish ambassador drove around in this during the early part of its life. Well, now it's here, and today I'm going to review it and show show you all of its quirks and features. Before I get started, big news, this Volvo 960 Executive is currently for sale and it's being auctioned live on cars and bins. This car has high miles and it's not perfect, but it's really cool and you'll never find another one like it. And it's being auctioned with no reserve. So once you finish watching this video, click the link in the description below to visit the live auction for this Volvo 960 where you can bid on it and buy it only on cars and bids. All right, time for the quirks and features of this unusual Volvo 960 Executive. And I'm going to start with a little overview of exactly what this car is. So the 960 Executive was a stretched wheelbase, almost limousine version of the Volvo 960 that was converted into long form by a company called Nielsen, a Swedish company that primarily makes Volvos into limousines. Now, this would not have been very common in the United States in the 90s or still today. Nobody does it because in the States we have our own limo vehicles, the Lincoln town cars and SUVs. We wouldn't have made a Volvo limo. And yet, this Volvo 960 is an original U.S. car that was converted in Sweden by Nilsson into this long wheelbase 960 executive. So, why, you might be wondering. Well, the first owner gives us the clue to that. If you look on the Carfax report for this car, it was sold new in the Washington, D.C. area, and it was never titled in a traditional way with a state or D.C. title. Instead, it was sold new and serviced at a Volvo dealership, which means it was being driven, but no title to me implies it was probably titled with the United States Department of State as a diplomatic vehicle. Since it was a stretched wheelbase model done in Sweden and then sold in DC with no title. That's almost certainly the explanation of this car's history. And there's some further proof of that when you look in the glove box. This little booklet came with the car. It says Volvo Tourist and Diplomatic Sales. Very nice, high quality book. But you open it up, you get your usual warranty info in there and other car stuff. And when you check out the service records booklet under first owner, the only thing written is special vehicle. It didn't disclose who the first owner actually was because it was probably the Swedish embassy for use by the Swedish ambassador. Of course, none of this is verified, but it seems like a virtual certainty given all the circumstantial evidence around this car. Now, the Carfax report also shows that the original owner had this 960 executive until 2001, which suggests to me that they carted around the ambassador in it for the first six years of its life and then they probably upgraded to an S80, which was Volvo's next generation full-size sedan. That came out in 99 or 2000. So they switched probably to a limo S80 and they got rid of their 960 executive. Now, this car stayed on the East Coast for the next 20 years until the current owner bought it, also on cars and bids about a year ago. And he brought it out to the West Coast and now it's here and it's available again. The unusual limousine stretch style 960 executive. So let's talk about the stretch. As you can see, it's not tremendously obvious that this car has been elongated and larger than a regular 960. It's not like this is a stretch limo or some six door vehicle. Instead, it was a small stretch. It was subtle. It was all in the back. The front didn't get a stretch, the trunk. It's all for the rear passengers for a chauffeur driven, comfortable experience. But if you know your Volvo, 
Volvos, there are a few giveaways on the outside to this stretch, the biggest being the shape of the rear window. In a regular 960, it slants down with the rear pillar and kind of matches its angle. But here, everything's been changed. The rear window is more squared off, which is a totally different look from the standard 960. Also worth pointing out, the door itself is just longer. And if you've been around some 960s in your life, you might notice the subtle difference in the larger, longer door on the outside. Other than that, not too much to notice that separates this from a standard 960 until you climb inside. When you climb in back of the 960 Executive, the stretch is immediately obvious because, well, for one thing, there's just more room. You got a lot of nice space where you can sort of lie down back here and relax, almost like you'd expect to see in a BMW 7 Series long wheelbase or the long Mercedes S-Class Audi A8L. That's what this feels like. Even though the 960 wasn't a full-size luxury sedan competitor with those cars, it has that sort of space back here thanks to the elongated wheelbase. And there are a lot of other changes in the back in this 960 compared to standard models. The most obvious is there's only two seats back here. The center seat and seat belt is gone. Instead, you just have two nice, comfortable, supple rear seats, one for the ambassador and one for his guest as they drive along. You also have some nice luxury touches. Of course, the seats are leather. They are also reclining. This little switch on the side of the seats will move the seat up, down, backwards, forwards. That wasn't something you could get in a standard Volvo 960, and obviously it added to your comfort here. Both sides have reclining seats. You also have heated seats back here. Heated rear seats was another thing that you couldn't get in your standard Volvo 960, but for the Swedish ambassador, nothing else would do, and so a nice luxury switch you press to add even more comfort. And that center seat has been replaced by a very supple leather armrest. You pull down this leather tab, and then you have this armrest where you can, well, rest your arm and have a little bit more comfort in back, which is nice. Also, you can open up this armrest and you have a little storage area under here where you can put your important and sensitive documents and papers. Now, beyond that stuff, you get two other big benefits here compared to a standard 960. One, the rear window is just huge. As a function of the elongated doors, you have this massive and fully rectangular rear window that looks huge when you're looking out and you can put it down and then you have a huge opening. It really is a big rear window for the ambassador's enjoyment and use. And speaking of windows, you also have a rear sunshade back here. You can see it's up right now. It doesn't really do a great job of blocking out the sun, but it is there to add a little bit more luxury compared to your standard 960 experience. Now, you'll notice back here that all of this stuff combines for a nice, luxurious, comfortable feel, but nothing over the top. There's no, like, screens here or tray tables or wood veneers or absurd stitching and lamb's wool. It doesn't have that. It's a very Swedish take on luxury, which is to say it's nicer, it's better, it's more comfortable, roomier, but it's not over the top. Sort of subdued and subtle and reasonable but nicer. You will also notice it is surprisingly factory looking back here. Even though Nielsen modified this car, made it longer, and changed a lot of stuff in the back, the bucket seats, the reclining, the heated seats, none of it looks anything other than factory. Nielsen and Volvo worked closely together at the time and still today on these stretched Volvo models. And so Nielsen was able to get a lot of Volvo probably parts and materials to elongate door panels, retrim seats, to make it look like it would have looked that way when it left the factory. Certainly in the Ambassador wouldn't have wanted to drive around in some weird aftermarket looking mishmash of parts. This looks like Volvo did it themselves. And next up we move up front in the 960 Executive where, well, it's very 960, which is to say there really aren't any changes up here that would let you know you're looking at a special different model that's been stretched more luxurious. It just looks like a standard run of the mill regular old 960 up here. The only difference is this little chrome strip on the passenger side of the dashboard that runs all along and says 960 Royal. That is still in Volvo's font and obviously it's different from a regular 960 which wouldn't have had a Royal insignia. Now I don't know why it says Royal and not Executive but it's worth pointing out that the Royal family of Sweden did use stretched 960s at the time for their use driving around 
around. It obviously wouldn't have been this one. It was a U.S. car. It's always been in the U.S., but 960 Royal models did exist, and I imagine that chrome strip came from one of them. Maybe they didn't have one that said 960 Executive. But other than that, the Frontier is pretty standard 960, and I gotta say, it's surprisingly modern and cutting edge for the mid-90s. Volvo did a good job in the early 90s. They came out with the 850. It was supposed to be a new era, and the interiors reflected that, including the interior of the larger model, the 960. It was a more modern, more up-to-date interior for a more modern Volvo car buyer. Stuff is intuitively laid out here. There's not weird buttons or switches in strange places. Nothing is difficult to press or find. It's all pretty modern and feels that way in here. Even compared to its rivals at the time, Volvo was sort of on the cutting edge for once in their lives. One interesting modern touch is Volvo's extreme use of lowercase lettering throughout the radio head unit. You can see there's no real upper case here. It's all lowercase, which would have been like a, a cool little edgy decision at the time. <laughs> Not to just put everything in uppercase or at least uppercase the first letter. Of course, over the years, it's become even more like edgy and cool to just write in lowercase, but here's Volvo doing it in 95. Now, there are a couple of interesting quirks up here beyond the whole stretch limo type situation, just some weird things about the 960. For example, on the gear selector, you can see three buttons mounted next to it, W, S, and E. Those stand for winter, sport, and and econ, and you had to pick one of them. There was no like normal mode. You were either in winter, sport, or econ. Econ is sort of a normal driving mode. Sport would tighten up the shifts and make the car faster. Yeah, right? W for winter would start you in second gear. And then the theory was you wouldn't be slipping so much starting from a lower gear in winter mode instead of having all wheel drive. That was kind of their solution, which was a reasonable decision. Obviously not a lot of cars had a winter mode in the 90s, but Volvo being Swedish, it was a priority and so this has it. Next up, another interesting quirk in here. The mirror controls are on the driver's door panel like so many other cars, and you can see two separate little switches to control driver and passenger mirrors. In most cars, you get one switch and then a little rocker that controls left-right, but not here. They went with the Bentley Rolls-Royce, just give them two switches for two mirrors, which is a nice touch. You also have another interesting one. The reading lights in this car are not mounted near the rear-view mirror on the ceiling, like so many other cars. Instead, they're in the center of the ceiling. You can see here the dome light and then two smaller reading lights. The theory being these reading lights are projecting behind you and into your lap to actually light up what you're reading. If it's a map or the passenger's reading a book, the light's coming from behind to light up the pages, which frankly is a pretty good idea. I also love over on the passenger seat, you have your power seat controls and then there is a bright red button that says stop, like an emergency button. I guess this was used if the passenger seat ever got out of control and started doing its own thing, you could just stop and then and then it would stop doing what it does. I've never seen an emergency stop on a power seat before, but maybe there was some concern that the seat would just get unruly, and so you needed that stop button there, I guess. And next we move under the hood where you can see this 960's powertrain. This flagship rear wheel drive, big Volvo luxury sedan stretched for its limousine duties uses a 2.9 liter straight six that made about 180 horsepower and about 200 pound feet of torque. It was not a tremendously powerful engine, although it has a reputation for being a reliable and durable one, which makes sense. This car has almost 240 thousand miles on it and it's still cranking right up with this 2.9 six cylinder just don't try to drag race anyone because you will lose now in case you're curious about the 960s positioning and its powertrain this was the larger of volvo's two models in 95 the other of volvo's two models in the states was the 850 which was also offered as a sedan or a wagon just like the 960 sedan or a wagon but the 850 was the entry level model it was cheaper it was front wheel drive and it was intended to be sportier compared to the 960 which was more expensive rear wheel drive and kind of more of a comfortable luxury cruiser. The two models were actually about the same size. The 960 was only a little bit 
bigger, but they were aimed at different markets. The 850, think of it was like a Audi A4 slash BMW 3 Series competitor, whereas this competed more with like the Lexus ES, maybe the Infiniti J30, if you remember that car, sort of more of a sluggish, reliable luxury cruiser to the 850's more sporty flair. And finally, we move on to the outside of this 960 Executive, where there are a few interesting touches worth pointing out. One is the wheels. These wheels were never offered on a US market 960. They never made it, but Nielsen added them to this long wheelbase executive conversion. So the wheels are also a distinctive touch if you really know your Volvo wheel designs. Otherwise, like I said, this stretch was subtle. You couldn't really tell it was different from a standard 960 unless you knew what you were looking at. And the overall shape was very Volvo and very 960, which is to say very boxy. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, Volvo had a reputation for making, well, boxy cars. A lot of right angles, squared off edges, and the 960 was no different. It primarily had straight lines, squared edges, boxy design. It really looked like a Volvo from this era. This was Volvo's distinctive design, boxiness, until the S80 and the S60 came out in the early 2000s, and they finally started to go away from more fluid, curvaceous look. Now, that boxy design primarily meant that the exterior of this car was largely devoid of interesting quirks and features, although there still are a few. One is headlight wipers. Volvo was all about safety back then, still today, but one of their safety advancements was headlight wipers. Not just windshield wipers, but wipers for your headlights, too. A couple of other brands did this around this time, but I think Volvo was probably best known for it in the day. You also have an antenna mounted on the rear window. Now, this car doesn't have a phone built into it, but it may have back when the Swedish ambassador was using it to drive around DC, and that would have been a pretty cool move. I'm calling you from the back of my limo Volvo, <laughs> and I got my phone antenna hanging off the rear window just to flex on everybody else. Other than that, also notable back here is the trunk. You pop it open, you can see nothing really unusual in here. Pretty big, like all the Volvo 960s. I don't think it's been changed at all for the stretch conversion. You do see a six disc CD changer mounted back here, which would have been a nice luxury touch back in 95. The Swedish ambassador could have listened to all of his favorite hits, like Dancing Queen. <laughs> All right, driving the Volvo 960 Executive. The Swedish ambassador sitting right back there 20 years ago, probably. I mean, really though, that's kind of what it seems like based on the Carfax, like I mentioned, and I really do think this car has sort of an important history. Probably when the Swedish prime minister visited the United States, he was probably driven around in this too. It has some real Swedish power. But one thing it doesn't have is some real Swedish power. <laughs> this car is not at all fast. That was a reality of the 960 in general. The interesting thing about this car is it is mechanically, it seems like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, you've seen probably some cosmetic defects around. The paint's not that great in places and there's, there's stains. I mean, this and that, there's stuff. It has high mileage, 237,000 miles, but mechanically it seems to ride well. Uh, that actually doesn't surprise me. This motor was known for its reliability. In fact, Volvo non-turbo Volvo powertrains from this era were known for being really durable. The other one was the 2.4 liter five cylinder that was the base engine in the 850. They were reliable, durable, strong powertrains. And this car, 240,000 miles later, admittedly, I haven't gone through the maintenance history. I don't know what's all been done, but it idles smoothly. It starts every time. It shifts smoothly. Um, I'm shocked by how smoothly it accelerates when you press the throttle. Like this car does not feel like it has 240,000 miles from a driving perspective. And that is not surprising. This was a different era of Volvo where especially these naturally aspirated cars and especially the 960, which was sort of the big robust one. And I'm not surprised at all that this thing is still running and that it still feels pretty nice. But like I was saying, the thing that it doesn't feel is very fast. The 960 was never a fast car, adding extra length and size to a 960, and then some more luxury accoutrement isn't going to turn it into a faster car, I can certainly tell you that. And so this is not an excitement machine in the sense that it, from a driving perspective, it's exciting. The cool factor of this car comes from the other stuff, namely the subtle stretch and its kind of diplomatic history, and the fact that every other Volvo on the road, you know, this is different, this is cooler, it's more special. And again, driving this car, 
I mean, it's it, it it's good. It feels healthy, which you might be surprised about given the mileage. But again, I'm not really given what I know about this powertrain. But it feels healthy. Um, but what it certainly isn't is again fast, fun, exciting. Now, one interesting thing is I, I don't really notice the stretch um, when I'm driving it. That doesn't surprise me that much. The stretch is subtle. Um, it was it was a stretch, but it also was mostly you know the two seats back there and added luxury back there. And so it's not like you're driving around on a town car limo with an 18 foot stretch. Like this is it's just a little bit more. And the 960, the regular one, was already a pretty robust feeling, kind of boxy, blocky, like big kind of thing. Uh, it sort of lumbered around. It was never intended to be like sporty or exciting or anything like that. And this car is kind of carries on that characteristic. It's not noticeably larger or more unwieldy, but the 960 itself was never exactly a sporty, you know, toss it around and have fun with it kind of thing. Overall, this car is this car is fun. I mean, it's cool. It's got like a cool story and a cool history, and it's certainly more exciting than any other 90s Volvo you're gonna see around. It's one for the geeky car enthusiast people like me, for sure. Like, I would see this at Cars and Coffee in a 458 next to it, and I'd walk up to this and be like, whoa, it's a stretch, it's an executive, is that Nilsson? And other people would see it and be like, why did this guy bring a 90s Volvo to Cars and Coffee? But it's a cool, to me, it's a cool thing, and it's got a cool history, and when it came up on Cars and Bids, I thought, I have to review this thing, because what a bizarre story. <laughs> Just, what a strange and unusual car. That's exactly what it is. And so that's the stretched executive limo version of the 1995 Volvo 960. This thing has come a long way from its original life, probably working for the Swedish embassy in Washington, D.C. But it's still cool, it's still exciting, and you can buy it on cars and bids. And now it's time to give the 960 executive a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 41 out of 100, which places the 960 Executive here against some other big luxury sedans from this period. It does fine, though the real benefit here is the cool factor of owning something unique. Otherwise, this Volvo isn't even as luxurious as non-specialized versions of the Mercedes S-Class or BMW 7 Series from this era. But because it's a bit weird, a bit quirky, it's certainly interesting and fun, and I'm glad I got to spend the day pretending to be the Swedish ambassador.